Hey guys, it's Young here from the GAC Attack channel and today we're going to talk about creating believable energy blast from the visuals to the sound. Now, whenever we're dealing with visual effects that don't exist in real life, it's important to fuse some elements of reality into our work. So let's go on a tangent and talk a little bit about light and physics. Condensed light usually contains a white core at its center where it's brightest. So whenever there's a light source, it's going to brighten up its nearby environment. But at the same time, it's also going to cast some shadows. And this brings us to Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now let's look at some energy blast footage that I've done before and keep those simple concepts in mind. So as you can see, I've added light to my body, roughly from where the light source is coming from. Now I didn't cast any shadows because there were already shadows in the footage and I also wanted to save time. However, I did create these stylized shadow waves during the blast. They're the dark wavy lines you see in the footage and they're not real but they simulate the feel and the look of casting shadows. This stylistic choice also serves another purpose. So remember we were talking about Newton's law and for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction? Well that's the second purpose of these shadowy waves. Now, it really wouldn't make any sense if I shot an energy blast and it blew me a million miles away. Oh, shit. <clears throat> so these stylized shadows visually convey an opposite reaction because it's dark instead of light and it moves in the opposite direction of the blast. Now, this isn't realistic, but it does add some level of believability that this is actually happening in the video. And there's a difference between believability and realism. Okay, now that we've covered that, now let's talk about the stylistic choices I made and the reasons behind it, as well as the sound design, which I don't think many people have covered. Dragon Ball is all about power levels and the potential within. I'd imagine that creating an energy ball with a large amount of force and to be able to maintain a constant flow of energy would be difficult. Uh, and this is the reason why you see a lot of violent fluctuations of the energy ball. But not at the beginning of the charge because the logic behind that was that being able to control a constant flow of energy in small amounts is doable. But not when you start adding more energy. I also added these intense circling light rays. Um, because you see them a lot in the in the movies and in the video games. Now we've talked enough about the visuals of creating an energy blast. What about the sound? I actually found this the hardest to do because there's not a lot of documentation about how anime production companies create their sound effects. Sound design is a lot easier than it was in the past because now we have all these huge libraries that we have access to and there's a ton, a ton of free sounds that you can download online for free. Just Google it. So the easy part was actually finding some energy sounding effects. Um, they're everywhere in video games. There are tons in libraries that you can find. And so getting the energy sounds for the charge was, was pretty simple. But I think the secret ingredient to get the right wow 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 sound in uh, from the Dragon Ball shows uh, was many many layers of harp sounds. You hear a lot of these sounds from old cartoons like this. And then I just kind of play around with the with the wavelength and the sound and the pitch and I was able to create a pretty good wow sound. So once I got the harp layers done right, it still felt a little bit empty and I felt it, it needed something that was going at a, at a higher frequency. So uh, I finally landed on bubbles. I'm pretty sure you could just record 
And if you add some sound filters to it and play around with the pitch, you can actually create some pretty convincing sounds. Uh, other suggestions that I think I would, I would try uh, in the future would be getting sound clips of, of waterfalls, like You get this really full, staticky, airy sound that, that you, you get from the, from the Dragon Ball shows. And, and if you play around, even with the, just a tap, if you have a tap water, you just put high, low, high, low, high, low. I think you can come up with something pretty convincing. Now I added a power down effect and a silence at the end of the charge um, because I wanted to create a dynamic contrast so that when the blast occurred it would feel more impactful as it happened. So creating the blast was, wasn't as hard as the charge. Um, it, it was just a matter of getting a lot of different layers of explosion sound clips and uh, like fiery ex explosions, some quick, some long, and then playing, slowing them down and speeding some up, and then adding maybe some like debris sounds, like glass, I think adds a little touch to it. But I think the secret ingredient for the blast section to get like a convincing Dragon Ball feel is that high pitched tone you hear at the end of a blast, which I ended up u just using um, a cam camera flash sound. And I just stretched out the length of the sound clip and uh, played with the pitch some more. So there you have it. That's my methodology of creating energy blasts. I know some of you might be a bit disappointed because you were expecting like a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I I'm not a big fan of doing that when it comes to stuff that involves a lot of creativity. You know, I, I don't like seeing the same effect hatched out over and over and over again. You know, it's, it's one thing when it's something simple like a, like a muzzle flare or when it's something like a technical skill like sprite animation. I want to see people use their imaginations, bring something new. So thanks for watching, my name's Young and I'll see you guys soon. You ready for this? What am I ready for? <laughs>